Hi everyone, it's Cathy here from Memories Made Magical. Just like to welcome you all back to my channel. This morning I thought I'd try something a little bit different with mini albums. Um, I've got a big stash of CD-ROMs, crafting CD-ROMs that I've purchased over the years from different um, crafting companies. This one is actually from Joanna Sheen and it's one of her uh, double CD-ROMs and this one is featuring paintings by Kevin Walsh and this has got a double collection in there so it's got two CD-ROMs it's got one of the normal nostalgic um, times gone by and then there's another one it's got a Christmas collection as well in here these CD-ROMs are very useful they come with toppers and backing papers inserts, bookmarks, decoupage, sentiments, stationery sets, mini cards and envelopes notepads and shape cards and exactly the same for the Christmas one, except you've also got advent calendars in here. I use a lot of my CD-ROMs over the years to make keepsake cards and um, calendars and different things. And obviously as I've progressed now onto mini albums, I thought I'm going to give this a go and see if I can use it in the same sort of way as I use other papers like Graphic 45 and Stamperia. I know some of you have probably got some CD-ROMs in your stash. Um, but for those of you who have never used a CD-ROM, these are really easy to use. You literally just pop it into your um, your computer, your PC at home, and it's just literally click and print. So these this particular collection runs on Windows XP, Vista, Windows 7. I'm currently one, running Windows 10 on my PC, and this works absolutely perfectly. So, it's got very easy instructions how to use it. So, I'm not going to actually show you how to do it with the computer. But as I say, if you purchase them, they're very straightforward to use. So, I've printed out some papers and toppers from this collection. And they come as in a PDF format. So that when you print out the sheets, this is exactly what you get. You get little toppers in different sizes which you can cut down and use in your projects. I've printed these on 160 GSM white card and I found that the images came out quite nice and crisp and vibrant. So as you can see you get a big image and then you get lots of different little ones on there. So I've cut out some of the images that I wanted to use for my album. So I've cut them down from the sheets. In here. I'm going to actually be making a mini album for a gentleman, an older gentleman who likes to remember times gone by when he was younger and he's also got a great passion for vintage cars. So that's the particular reason why I used this album. Uh, the CD-ROM rather, because they have a lot of vintage, vintage vehicles in the pictures. So there we've got a scene with some, got an MG um, VGT there, or an MG Midget I think that might be, and old vintage caravan. So that's a little scene of some people enjoying themselves in the countryside, probably on holiday. This one is depicting London probably in the 1960s because you can see the young lady there in a mini skirt and the old city gent with his bowler hat and his umbrella there's the classic mini the original mini and the London black cab which I remember a lot scenes looking like this because I grew up in London when I was a child here is another one with vintage aeroplanes and old cars at an old aerodrome that actually says the Essex Aero Club on there. Another one that has Cabris. That's the old Cabris van and an old fashioned corner shop there when we used to be able to buy all our vegetables and things loose in brown paper bags in England, which was quite nice. And you could buy your potatoes by the pound and not by the kilogram as we do now. Another one with an old garage in a little country village somewhere with some geese 
and children playing by a vintage car while it looks like their dad's having another car fixed. Another beautiful one of a picture of an old seaside town somewhere in England. Looks like it could be Blackpool or somewhere like that where the donkey rides and people enjoying some seaside fish and chips. Back in the times when the seagulls weren't so greedy. Another one here with an old fashioned steam engine and children waving at the people on the train. So that's obviously a countryside scene. Another one. That's a very famous train. It's the Flying Scotsman. So anybody that's got people who have birthdays, gentlemen that like vintage trains and stuff like that, this would be a good image. And then another one with, I think that must be possibly an E-type Jag, some form of Jaguar. And the gentleman's obviously going off to the city to work and he's waving his wife goodbye. So as you can see, there's lots of images in this CD, absolutely loads. So I've only actually taken a few of the ones that I wanted because they had the vintage vehicles in them. Another thing that comes on the CD-ROM, as I explained, is the backing papers. So here I've cut down some backing papers to use in my mini album. So this one, it's go quite well with the aeroplane because it's just a nice backing paper that's got clouds on there. Another backing paper that will go with my um, image of the old grocery shop for Cadbury's. So it has all the chocolate and old Coleman's mustard and old, old brands of days gone by in England that we used to be able to buy quite readily over here and our parents used to buy like the old Bovril. So that will go quite well with that image. And then there's another one here just with polka dots on it, green polka dots. And then there's also some with some stripes, so I printed out a red and white stripe. And there's one with some blue and white gingham. So to complete my album, I've got to probably print out some more backing papers and I'm going to be doing that another day. So this tutorial is probably going to be in two halves. I'll first show you how, how I made my base album and then the second half is going to show you how to add pockets and flaps and um, then how to decorate it with all your papers. So the particular size of album I'm going to use is going to be a 6x6 six six. and it's one of the designs that I like a fabrication just using squares of chipboard and black card. This particular album I first found the tutorial for from um, Claire at My Creative Spirit she showed you how to bind chipboard pages into a mini album and I found that this is the one that I this is my go-to um, design that I like because it's quite easy and quick to make an album look really nice at the end of it it's quite easy to put together if you are a relative beginner so I will put a link to her video below but I'll also show you how I made this particular album I'm going to use, I'm doing a 6x6 six six, but I'm going to show you how to make a 5x5 five five using the little cutter cut-offs of your chipboard. So I started with A3, A3 um, sheets of chipboard and out of that I'm, I can get a 6x6 six six and a 5x5 five five quite easily without wasting too much of the card which was nice. So for this particular album, I've started with six sheets, six little squares of chipboard, all measuring five inches by five inches. And what I've done is along one of the edges, I've scored from one inch, down like that so that, that we can actually add our spine. So our spine is actually going to be 
like this here so it's going to be a deer with black card so your base pages as I said I'm going to show you the measurements for those <clears throat> and I will put the measurements in the description box below as well so base pages you need six 5 by 5 inches or 12.7 by 12.7 centimetres squares. You will then also need five pieces of black card for the spines and they will need to be 5 inches long by 3 inches wide or in centimetres that's 12.7 centimetres by 7.62 and then with the spine pieces I scored them at one and a half inches in the middle so that you've got one and a half inches either side to make up your three inches and then what I'm going to do you can see the score line down the middle that I made I'm sorry it's in black Possibly can't see, so I just put it on my scoreboard at one and a half inches. I'll just show you that quickly. Bring my scoreboard out, and I literally put my card up against the end, and I use a small part of my scoring tool and just scored straight down at one and a half inches. As easy as that. Then what I'm going to do is just turn over each piece and just with my scoring tool just burnish each piece of my spine. So just make sure we've got them in half. And what I tend to do, because you always want to turn like a valley into a mountain, and then that stops the card from actually cracking and it enables the fibres to stretch a little bit more. So on the side that you scored, turn, always turn it over and then bend it and burnish it. And then that way if you're using a card that's got any form of coating on it, you're not actually going to crack it or tear the coating. So I'm just going to do that with all five pieces. I think I'll actually put my mat onto my work station because it's making quite a lot of noise against the table. So this is the last one. There we go. So we've got five pieces of three inches by five inches spine, all scored in half at one and a half inches. So then we take one of our piece, our base pieces here, which is five by five. Just take that off. And where I've scored along one inch, I then want to put some tape. And what I'm going to be using is my Sticks to Red Liner tape. Exactly what it says, it sticks to basically everything. So I would turn, turn my card to one side to where I've got the line, and then I will take my red line tape and I will just put it along the line like so. So I've just cut a piece off there, just need my scissors. side of the line. Just line it up there and then I'll put another piece right beside it and I'll 
probably because this, this one is I think this is a quarter of an inch tape I would probably recommend using a one inch or at least a half inch tape and then that way you haven't got to do so many strips of it but um, I'm a little bit short of my half inch and one inch red liner tape at the moment so I'm just going to use if you have got quarter of an inch I just recommend using three strips I'll just get my scalpel and I'm just going to take off the tops of the tape so it's a little bit time consuming so I'm obviously not going to show you all of this but I'll just show you a couple so that you get the general idea Okay, so then we take a piece of our spine and what we want is we want to have a half, I think it's quarter of an inch, hanging over from the edge of the card so that it gives your album some flexibility to be able to open wider when you've put all your embellishments and your pockets and flaps and tags and things in. So I get the edge of the spine and I line it up with both edges of the card like so and then just literally just hold it down and then you can see I've got about a quarter of an inch hanging over from the end there okay and then I'm going to get another piece of my card put some more tape on so again I'm going to line it up to the line that I've drawn on there. I found that on black card a red pen tends to stand out quite well. So then just put another three strips on there. So it'd be a lot less time consuming if you use half inch or one inch tape. You wouldn't have to use so many strips. There we go, and if you excuse me one second, I think I'm just going to go and get my other scalpel. over here. It just tends to lift the tape a little bit quicker. Probably because it's not so sharp. Okay, so now the first one was quite easy to do. So the second one what we want to what I tend to do is hold the card upwards with this one hold that together and then line up the card top and bottom and then sandwich them together So that when you open it up, it goes to the spine nicely flat. So then we just carry on until we've got all of our pages, chipboard pages in place. So I'm just going to put the last piece of the spine on now, or hinges should I say. I keep using the word spine, but it's actually the hinges that I'm making.
So if you have any little pieces of your tape overhanging, just tuck them in. So that's going to be our last spine, or hinge rather. You may notice this part of the video, the background looks a little bit different and that's because I ran out of um, room on my memory card so I had to load another memory card in to my camera. three little bits of our tape off. hold our last piece of chipboard up just line them all up again with the sides and the bottom and just and that piece down. So then you've got the beginnings of your chipboard album. So you can see there's the pages. It all opens, closes quite nicely. There we go. So then I'm going to go back to the 6x6 six six album that I'm going to show you that I'm working on. So, same principle, you've got the same pages, just like that. So I'll take the 5x5 five five one out of the way, and now I'm going to start showing you how to add pockets and flaps into your album. So, I've started, I've already put in one of the pockets here, which is going to have a side opening like that and then a flap here I'm just going to bring that camera angle oops oops I'm just going to zoom out a little bit show you a little bit better and then it's all because I'm going to have flaps at the top and then more pockets at the side so, <clears throat> to make our pocket that we put in here, because obviously this is a 6x6 six six album, I took a piece of, I'm just going to move that out of the way, oops, put a scoreboard back in. See my scoreboard. And then for the pockets, I used a piece of black card which measures six inches across and twelve inches long. So I put that onto my scoreboard. Just got my scoring tool, found the six inch line which is here 
I literally just scored straight down the middle of the 12 inch piece of card. I'm going to do this for each pocket. So then again turn it over, line it up so it's completely in half, hold the edges and just burnish down the middle. So now you've got a six by six inch opening card here, which is going to be one of our pockets. So I take my next page, which is that one. And this is how I want my pocket to be. I want it to go in like that. And then when I stick the card down, to make a nice opening pocket here at the side for photo mats to go in. The other thing I want to do first also is to make a flap that will attach to the top of my pocket. So the flaps I've made five and three quarter inches by five and a half or 14.6 by 13.97 centimetres. So that's the size, of the size of the flaps. And they're going to sit, I've got my pocket, pocket's going to go that way. They're going to sit here so that you can open them up over the top of the pockets to make the flaps. So, pocket flap are up five and a half inches as I said so you want a quarter of an inch to make the hinge for the flap so on my five and three quarter edge which is this one I want to turn it around and score on a quarter of an inch So here, at the moment, I've got five and three quarters on there, and there's my five sorry, that way round. There we go. So that's my five and three quarter edge. So I want to get my scoring tool score it along the five and a half inches along here so it gives me a quarter of an inch oh I'm going to have to stand up and do this bit so that will then give me a quarter of an inch It's going to board out of the way again and then I'm just going to turn the quarter of the inch flap over and burnish it down and then you also want to just mitre your edges so literally just just cut corners off there and then I'm going to put a piece of quarter inch tape just along the little line of where I want the flap to attach to the pocket We 
you go. Take the backing tape off of there. Bring my pocket back in. It will be a pocket, obviously, when I stick it together. So that, I'll just check where that's going to sit in my album. So that's the pocket that's going that way. So I want the opening of the pocket at the side here. So then what I do is I open the card and then I take my flap and I line it up. I find it easier if you just bend it back so that you can line it up before you put the flap at the back. And then I'm going to try and line that up so it's nice and straight. So, and then hold on to the back and just fold that straight down onto the back of that pocket, like that. There we go. So when that goes into the album, that's going to have a flap on it and it's also going to be a pocket. So then I want to just seal both of my edges of the pocket. So I just put some red line tape again just down the edge, that edge and the other one. So, and then just stick that together. So then we've got a pocket there our photo mats. We're going to go in like so. So you've got a pocket in the side and then you've got a flap up as well. So then all that leaves us to do for this one is just to literally stick this into our album. So I'm going to turn it upside down, get some wet glue because I find that's the easiest actually use some wet glue. It sticks well, a lot better than tape. If you have got some red line tape, as I said I was getting a little bit low on mine, but red line tape will stick just as well as wet glue. So make sure you've got the right side, turn it over and just add some wet glue onto the back. be quite generous with the glue. Try not to get it to the edges if you can help it. And my glue of choice is, many of my subscribers would know, is the um, Glossy Accent Clear Dimensional Medium. So it's a nice glue and it also gives a glossy finish to anything that you paint it onto, like embellishments. So then we just bring our album back into play, get to our page where we want it. So we want the opening at the front and the flap at the top. We turn that round and then another good thing with wet glue is that you can reposition it until you get into the exact place where you want it to be. So I tend to get a little bit of wriggle room as well with it. So just going to line it all up. Like so. Make sure it's nice and straight at the bottom. Bring my flap up. And then just 
smooth it all down. You can use your fingers or if you feel a bit happier use the score tool or bone folder. You can see we've now got four completed pages. I've got open the front of the album and I have a side pocket here which these are the photo mats that I'm going to be using. Photo mats they measure five and a half inches by four and a half inches or 13.97 centimeters by 11.43 centimeters and they will fit very nicely into our side pockets just like that and in my second half of the video I will show you <coughs> how to add tabs onto the photo mats and decorate them okay so your second page you've got a nice flap up with another side pocket So there's going to be plenty of room for photos. And then the third page that we've just done together is another flap and another pocket. A bit careful with this one because obviously the glue hasn't quite dried yet. So you get the general idea. So this album is going to have pockets on each page, each side of each page, and flaps on there as well, on each one as we go along. Okay, so I'm going to finish this part of the video, this first half of the video, just by showing you about how to add a couple of little base mats photo mats just to just decorative pages to go on there so these measure six by six so what I like to do is have a little bit of the black border showing so I would probably suggest taking one of your, your backing papers and cutting it down <coughs> if you don't want to have a, um, a border of the black showing then obviously by all means just leave it six by six inches otherwise if you do like me then just take one of your backing pieces and pop it up on your trimmer and I'm going to take it to one, two, three, four, five and seven eighths the same the other way so that my piece of backing paper is going to measure five and seven eighths on both sides I'm going to do another piece <coughs> excuse me just to show you I'm going to put two pieces of backing paper onto two pages just so you get the general idea of the contrast because at the moment if I see everything's in black so it's not very easy to see. I do apologise about that but I do love using a black card because I find that it coordinates with all sorts of colours and it then also makes all your pages when you decorate them pop. Right, so I'll take our album back again. And I'm going to use, I think I'll use the red one. Just to go on there. So just take some tape. I'm going to use some normal um, double-sided tape. 
tape and I've just got I think it's the three quarters of an inch tape here you don't need to have red line tape for the backing papers because obviously they're all going to just sit nice and flat and they're not going to have any any weight on them To open or anything. So you don't need the papers to be stuck down with anything more than a, a normal score tape. So if you'd like, just use wet glue for this. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. You can use wet glue for this because I know a lot of people like to use wet glue because it can be a lot quicker than using score tape. And then you just decide whichever way you want your paper to go. I think I'm going to leave mine going horizontally. And then you just line it up just so that you've got a little border top and bottom and at both sides just like that and then I'm going to put the blue one next to it one piece just across the diagonal just to make sure that you don't have any gaps that may cause air bubbles so that your paper stays nice and flat and then again a little tiny border all the way around so a little bit of tape that I should have just folded the edge back on. So there you can see the contrast now. See where we've got the pockets and the flaps and then we get one of our photo mats and you can just pop it in the side there see up against the contrast of that just how it's going to sit. So thanks for watching this half of the video and next time I'm going to come back with the second half where we're finishing the assembly of the album and decorating it in the lovely pictures that I showed you earlier. Thanks for watching, till next time, take care and happy crafting.